Today, we're going to talk about the Trump administration sending paramilitary forces into Portland and what they're trying to accomplish by doing it, and my interview with Congressman Ted Lieu, where we'll talk about the legality of Trump's moves in Portland, Bill Barr's upcoming testimony to the House Judiciary Committee, and the consequences of commuting Roger Stone's sentence for Trump after he leaves office. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen, and you're listening to No Lie. If you've watched any news lately, you've seen what's happening in Portland. You've seen armed paramilitary forces, tear gas, flash grenades, unprovoked arrests. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the video of a Navy veteran getting beaten with a baton and then gassed for the crime of standing. I'm sure you've seen videos uh, showing camouflaged officers throwing protesters into unmarked vans. So how did we get here? Protests have been happening since May in Portland, just like in a slew of other cities around the country. And they were largely peaceful, just like they've been in a slew of other cities around the country. At the same time, polling was showing that the American people have been largely on the side of protesters. 89% of Americans have said that police violence is a problem, according to polling by The Guardian. And yet Trump has positioned himself on the wrong side of that fight, to, to no one's surprise. Donald Trump is not going to come out in favor of social justice, and especially not for black people. Sorry, that's, that's not the guy. At the same time, he's also on the wrong side of this administration's handling of the coronavirus outbreak, with two-thirds of Americans disapproving of his pandemic response. In other words, Trump is on the wrong side of both of these major crises going down in America. So what does he do? Well, he uh, takes a long, hard look in the mirror and admits he was wrong, but promises to do whatever is necessary moving forward to keep the American people safe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. He decided to distract us with something else. Yeah, so on June 26, he signed an executive order under the pretense of preventing federal monuments and buildings from destruction. Remember that? The, the campaign pivot to defending statues? Yeah, that's still happening. Coming up on 150,000 dead Americans, and Trump's out there defending the most vulnerable among us, which are statues of Robert E. Lee and other traitors who went to war to destroy this country. Because somehow, that's patriotic. Yeah, if someone can explain that to me, by all means. Then on July 4th, Federal troops arrived in Portland under the pretense of protecting federal property. The federal property in this case being a U.S. district courthouse and a federal building. Now, the agency normally tasked with overseeing the destruction of federal property is the Federal Protective Service. But that's not who's in Portland right now. In Portland, there are U.S. Marshals, there's a unit of Customs and Border Protection, CBP, and ICE. Now, in, in fairness, federal government does have the authority to protect federal property. But that's not what's happening here. We're seeing these troops patrol streets and effectively kidnap protesters and lob volleys of tear gas blocks away from the protests. And the Homeland Security officials are claiming that those who travel uh, beyond the boundaries of the courthouse are conducting investigations. To get an idea of just how absurd this is, David Lappin, the former spokesman for the DHS, back when Trump's first Homeland Security secretary ran the agency, when he was asked about officials going beyond the borders of the courthouse, he said, quote, that's not an investigation, that's just a show of force. This isn't an Obama official, it's not a Bush official. This was the DHS spokesman for Trump. That's how far this administration has gone off the rails. We're still in the same term we were when that guy served this president. And already he sounds like Bernie Sanders by comparison now. But the other issue, aside from... Uh, you know, the, the legality of these federal troops going beyond their jurisdictions, is why they're there in the first place. And this is the important part. Here's the excuse Trump gave as to why he sent the feds in. You know, if you look at what's gone on in Portland, those are anarchists, and we've taken a very tough stand. If we didn't take a stand in Portland, you know, we've arrested many of these leaders. If we didn't take that stand, right now you would have a problem like, you know, you, they were going to lose Portland. That if the feds didn't come in, there'd have been a problem. Let's be honest here. The cause of the violence in Portland is because of these federal troops. Local officials across the board have been crystal clear that the protests were peaceful before federal troops arrived on July 4th. Granted, that doesn't mean you won't have a, a few troublemakers, but who doesn't? What city doesn't? It doesn't mean you call in paramilitary forces. Graffiti on the walls of a building doesn't mean you turn that city into a war zone. And that's the, that's the excuse they gave, graffiti. These are federal troops, paramilitary forces, being sent into an American city to police graffiti. We have images of Portland like it's 
Fallujah in 2004 because people tagged a building with paint? Are we really supposed to believe that? What happens when someone breaks a window? Do we drop a bomb? The fact is that sending those troops into Portland wasn't meant to quell the violence. It was meant to incite it. The purpose is to achieve the exact outcome that we're seeing right now, which is prolonged and sustained and dramatic violence, which the White House has shockingly capitalized on in their campaign to deflect attention away from the things that are killing them in the polls. I mean, this literally could not be any more clear cut. Trump absolutely failed in responding to, to coronavirus. He failed in responding to the BLM protests. He failed in responding to the economic recession. All of these things are still going on. So either he continues to marinate in these issues and his poll numbers continue to tank, or he makes different news. So he made different news. He created a brand new conflict, a brand new crisis that he's hoping this time will work out in his favor. This guy is so incapable of change that instead of fixing one of the existing issues, he opted to create a new one with the hopes of finally getting people on his side this time. And so he sent federal troops into an American city to tear gas peaceful protesters exercising the First Amendment right under the guise of protecting a building, a building, a concrete building. You look at the images coming out of Portland, they are the closest thing I've ever seen to authoritarianism in the United States, ever. And it's to protect a building. That's the best excuse they could come up with. Like, they said Obama was a dictator because he tried to give people health care. That's not a joke. Conservatives called Barack Obama an authoritarian as he was pushing to pass the ACA, which would give 20 million Americans health care coverage. Could you imagine what Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity would have said if Obama tried to send paramilitary forces into Alabama and Mississippi? Could you imagine? By the way, want to know how inept this administration is when it comes to messaging? The anarchists of the Trump administration and the uh, acting DHS secretary are fear-mongering about on Fox News. You know who those anarchists are? They're moms. Those are the most visible protesters in Portland right now. Moms. They're literally a, a group of women who are calling themselves the Wall of Moms. Yeah, be careful, America. You elect Democrats, and uh, before you know it, we'll be taken over by mothers. <laughs> like, and that group gave way to a wall of dads, and that gave way to a wall of veterans. So if you're keeping score here, we have, uh, on one side, largely unidentifiable paramilitary forces, unresponsive to local officials or law enforcement, whose targets, on the other side, are mothers, fathers, and veterans. Way to go, Donald Trump. Congratulations on your newest attempt to win the news cycle by targeting our parents and vets. I'd say the only worst thing would be attacking kids, but he and Betsy DeVos are already busy trying to pack them into classrooms in the middle of a pandemic, so he's already got that covered. Also, I gotta ask, where are all the Second Amendment people? Like, this is what they've been waiting for, right? This is what they've been warning against. This is why they've been stocking their arsenals to defend against tyrannical government overreach. And finally, finally, they got it. Federal paramilitary forces, apparently only answerable to, to one person, the President of the United States, and no one else, arresting American citizens in their own cities for exercising their First Amendment rights. Isn't that basically what the entire modern GOP is predicated on? You ask any Republican what the Bill of Rights says, and it starts and ends with the Second Amendment. And yet we've got crickets from the right. Not a word from a single Republican. I don't know if it's because they're such partisan hacks that they're fine with tyranny as long as it's happening in democratic cities, or because they're just too cowardly to dare speak out against Donald Trump. But regardless of the reason, you don't need much more proof that their justification for fawning over the Second Amendment isn't and never was to protect against a tyrannical government. Like, it's, it's almost funny. No one has done a better job of inadvertently exposing Republicans as hypocrites as Trump has. This is a party that, that once claimed it was pro-life before rallying behind a guy whose failed response to the pandemic has killed 150,000 Americans. This is a party that called itself pro-family values before lining up behind a guy who's now an unindicted co-conspirator in a case involving him using campaign funds to pay off porn stars for affairs. It's a party that paraded itself around as fiscal conservatives only to see the deficit and the debt explode to unprecedented heights during this administration. 
they have undermined every single one of their own self-righteous positions while coddling Trump. They've exposed themselves as frauds on literally every position. And so now, when they had the chance to back up their anti-tyranny stance that they've been screeching about for the last 50 years, it's straight up silence. I mean, like, you gotta hand it to Trump. No one's done a better job at exposing the moral bankruptcy of the GOP as he has. So what's happening now? What's the legal recourse here? Well, Portland's officials have made it clear that they don't want these federal agencies there. Oregon's attorney general has said it's, quote, absolutely beyond their authority. Senator Ron Wyden called the troops uh, an occupying army. Pelosi called them stormtroopers. Portland's police bureau kicked the federal representatives out of the city's command post. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler called the deployment, quote, an egregious overreaction on the part of the federal officers. And he said, quote, this is not a de-escalation strategy. This is flat out urban warfare. The state has issued a legal challenge to the presence of these troops in court, but they lost their bid for a restraining order on the grounds that it lacked standing. Uh, but there are other challenges making their way through the courts right now. Uh, I discussed this too in my interview coming up with Ted Liu, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like cities or states have the ability to actually exert any authority over these troops, at least not for the time being. So the answer here is to make noise about this and make sure that everyone is aware this is what is on the ballot in November. Like, keep in mind too, they'll enter more cities. Because even though this is an unmitigated disaster, Trump only knows how to dig in his heels. We just went through six months of pretending that coronavirus wasn't real. We saw 150,000 Americans die. You think that guy's going to be able to pivot? Not a chance. So he'll continue sending his stormtroopers into U.S. cities with the hope of, of willing into existence this idea that, that Democratic-run cities are dangerous, so if you vote for Joe Biden, the whole country's going to devolve into the hellscape that is Portland. Not realizing that Portland is a hellscape because of Donald Trump, because of these troops. There's violence happening because the violence is the point. I saw a quote that summed up perfectly what we're seeing here. Her name is uh, Jennifer Christensen. She's a family law attorney who came out to the protest to join the Wall of Moms. She said, This is not creeping authoritarianism. The authoritarianism is here. Trump wants this to be the issue that we vote on in November. So I say, let it. Let it. Now, before I go, I want to suggest one more thing. A lot of people have been asking how they can help beyond, you know, retweets and donations and listening to certain podcasts. Uh, another option is, if you're young and healthy enough that you're at less risk, you can register to be a poll worker. They are in desperate need of poll workers around the country. And most people who've worked the polls in the past are seniors who are at higher risk of catching coronavirus. If they stay home and there aren't enough people to staff the polls, those polls will close. And I don't think I have to explain how much of a disaster that would be. So if you can spare some time, please register to become a poll worker. You can go to workelections.com for more information. Again, that's workelections.com. That's it for this episode. To hear my interview with Congressman Ted Lieu, please check out the interviews playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks and talk to you next week. You've been listening to No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, produced by Sam Graber, music by Wellesley, and recorded in Los Angeles, California. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your preferred podcast app. Feel free to leave a five-star rating and a review and check out briantylercohen.com for links to all of my other channels.